Welcome to Real and Chill. Commentary and reviews of TV shows and films written, directed, or starring people of color. I am your host, Fiat Hollins. And I am Lenrico Williams. Thank y'all for tuning in for another episode. So, this week, we are going to be, did I? This week, we are talking about the movie Dark Party. And as you can see, it's uh, directed by Kadeem Hardison, you know, different world, Dwayne Wade. No, Dwayne not Dwayne Wade. Wade. Dwayne Wayne. Dwayne Wayne. The flip up glasses. One of my favorite characters of the whole show. One that thought being a nerd was cool. Going to college was cool. Shout out to Different World and the whole cast. Um, Also the screenplay and written by William Wells and Dean Hardison. Sanaya? What you Salenta? Salenta. S. Baysden. S. Baysden. And Terry T- Wilkerson. And also, we forgot to give uh, Evan Grayson. He was also a writing credit. Uh, the synopsis of this movie. Um, okay, well, I talk about this. This movie was nominated for American Black Film Festival in 2012. So um, it was nominated for Best Film. And of course it didn't win, but at least it was nominated. And the, uh, the part, the Dark Party movie was actually released in 2013. So we kind of stumbled upon this, but, you know, just looking for new movies to look, watch. On Amazon. We watch most of our movies either on Amazon or Netflix. And so it'll be easy for you all to go out and watch it too. Yep. So the synopsis of this movie, The Dark Party, is a modern day tale of looking for love in all the wrong faces. When the two best friends, Jeff, who is a weed man slash artist, played by Kadeem Hardison, and his friend Mike, a a music producer and a womanizer, uh, played by Marcus Patrick, enlist the aid of a radio talk psychologist to help turn a ultimate dark party into a social experiment. Okay, that's all you got? That's the synopsis. That's the synopsis. Okay, so um, we're going to go into the, the first clip. Um, I will say that aside from... Aside from it being like three minutes too long, it's it's a long, long, long opening credit. Um, the song was really nice. I think it's like alternative rock or whatever. But you listen to it and you you decide what you think. And also, it was uh, when you think about it uh, again, it's Kadeem Hardison. So you like very excited for this movie to start and. Yeah. Play the clip and I tell you how long it was exactly. (laughs) I swear. See Dwayne Wayne. Being partisan. <laughs> so, of course, we didn't show you all the whole three minutes, but the intro, was, opening credits, it was literally three minutes long. They actually played the entire song. That song right there, it was a nice song though, and we've looked at this so much she that. Only thinks so. <laughs> huh? What I say? I said. Oh, I only you, think it's a good song. It just. Well, just think it's a good song. We it think okay. it's a good song. Like, yeah, I'm just no, like get to I'm, the movie. Exactly. 
I heard the song so much and we've seen this and gone through this and edited this so much that I'm singing the <laughs> the chorus and everything. Like, she don't know who made it either. I don't know who made it. So song. if you know who made it, email us. Or just so, Google it. So she we can, can just uh, Google it. See the chorus and we also watch everything with um, subtitles. That's just a habit. So you see at the bottom, like I was really re- reading the dog on, well, not reading, but singing the song. So that's just to give you a little snapshot of like the song so you can hear it. And the, um, do you have anything to say about this before we go into the next clip? No, that that's pretty much it. And um, the next clip is um, to to give you uh, to set you up what what you're about to watch. Again, Mike is um, is the friend of uh, Jeff who Kadeem Hardison playing, and he's a womanizer and. He's uh, complaining about his girlfriend, and he's saying that she's crazy. And she's, I mean, she had a small role, but she she was pretty funny. And this- Really damn funny. And this clip, you would get a taste of how funny she is and also how crazy she is. This is a small clip. It's a, a much longer really? scene, but it we is. just want to, we don't want to spoil it to you because we, we want y'all to laugh as well, but this is pretty funny. You said everything I was going to say, so I kind of feel like you just stole everything I was going to say, but this scene pretty much Stop put the nail, me, whatever, <laughs> put the nail in the coffin on him still in the deal. Like I need to leave this chick alone. I'm to set it up. This is a scene where they get robbed, or almost get robbed at gunpoint. So, but but the the girlfriend intervened. So this is just they did get robbed. Did, did he? He did he take something? Yeah, he took something. Oh, I ain't know he took that. I was too busy laughing. Listen, okay, I was too busy laughing at her. But okay, this is a real quick clip. You don't even know if they got real. Well, neither did you. You don't even know who's loaded. <laughs> Listen, I'm tempted to like play it again because it's like, how y'all arguing after y'all just got robbed though? And he told me so. Did you? She, she said, "You don't even know the gun was real." I'm like, what person thinks like that when they get robbed? It's when like, they get robbed, but girl, but she intervened. But y'all had y'all have to see the clip. Like she legit intervened. Like was arguing with the robber. So, oh, uh, like a total no no. Like don't get I, Mike is like. Wish- Are you crazy? So that it, it was just funny. So that's what that was about. In the um, in this next scene, we were kind of, kind of um, not we were kind of not torn about it, but we were, again we were confused about it. So again, we have these expectations because this is Kadeem Hardison, but we all know like people are doggone human just because he's Dwayne Wayne don't mean that he can't blah 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 whatever it's like he probably didn't originate the script but he just probably helped um help with the screenplay part of it he probably did not write it initially but he did help with the screenplay so in this one this in this scene they're at an event and he in the previous was it was had to be a previous clip like he dreamt dreamt about this girl so that's that's, I mean that's what that's up for debate yeah it's like he dreams about her and then he he meets her or sees her and then her reaction like she doesn't even know him so we assume that it's someone that he has seen before you know how you see somebody at a grocery store or something you know you live in the same neighborhood you come across somebody so that's what um this setting up this scene and also to give kind of like the backstory of what's going on with with her yeah because that this clip what you're about to watch is even though it's this is him meeting her for the first time like like he has said it's like it was unclear how he seen her so i don't know if he imagined a girl whatever the case may be so we was like so what's going on so that was our first what the fuck is going on moment right <laughs> and, that, and then that flows into because that goes into the other one so we don't know again if he already knew her but based on their conversation conversation she doesn't know him so we assume that again, she's just a girl in his dreams. And then um the scene immediately after that, we can't tell if it's a dream, a flashback, a current day. But the girl got some baggage. Just look. Hey, hey I'm sorry. Hi. Hi. What are you doing here? What's going on with you, baby? What's really happening? 
Huh? You can't return a phone call. You that busy? You can't return a fucking phone call. So that it was like that's literally how the scene happened. Um, uh, was well, there was a scene before that, but I'm saying just the transition into that part is pretty much how it happened. You know how when someone is about to go into a dream and it puts like a little like you, they'll change the the color of the scene it either goes like black and white or it goes to I, you know I, like a, i don't know what it was i don't know if he was had a premonition or this was a of uh a, that happened in the past it was just weird because prior to this scene uh one of the main characters mike was in it and she ran into him and it's like what are they what doing together? Yeah, you know this, what I mean? And it is, showed as if it was like a black and white. It's three scene. people in the alley and they bump into each other. That's exactly. like a weird like, shit that we saw. How the hell did he get there? Because prior to that, he was at a party and he kind of passed out because he had drank too much or whatever. And then it goes into this scene and it shows like black and white. You know, there's a little little bubble. I can't even ima- can't think about what they it's like call water that scene. Drop, uh, like water to show ripples. you that it is transitioning into something. And it, he was just laying down, went to this scene, and then he bumps into her in this alley. Then that's her ex-boyfriend, and we're just like, what's going on? So we don't know if that's a dream, flashback, or current day, but it's, it gives you the impression that it's a dream because Mike was laying down prior to that. And we still don't have no idea why he was even in that part. So it was like, what the fuck? Still don't know. And then this next scene... I said that uh, this is another movie that unless it was filmed back in the 90s and not released until 2013, I feel like Dwayne Wayne got some explaining to do. So just um, listen to the commentary and look at the the text that's on the screen because maybe you all would have missed it. But it was kind of obvious to us. Now, why would you say it before we show it? (laughs) Roll the footage. Star sixty nine. Star six seven. <laughs> Had to let himself my grandma. That's a razor phone. <laughs> Motorola razor. So, as you can see, she had a razor phone, and he's calling on a landline. It's 2013. Still I just need... Landline. I mean, he's an artist, so he's, like, more nostalgic. No, he's pr- not, no not artist. He's probably broke. No. Like, um, oh, he's probably a struggling artist, like a starving artist. He may have a landline, but why Why does she have a razor phone? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. It just was weird. Like... They, they I'm not saying. On a I just assume that everybody is plan. with the like the modern times, except for like again, like I said, my grandmother's the only one I know with a flip phone. I mean, with a flip phone. Well, she did have a flip phone too, but she's the only one I know with a landline. She, she, she's she, had she, it since 1974. So, not knocking landlines, but I just didn't expect to see that in a movie that came out in 2013. Right. <laughs> so. So uh, overall, this movie, what I what I truly, truly enjoyed how Mike and Jeff played off each other. It was like it seemed like they was truly friendship. They truly had a friendship since they was kids. They was almost like brothers. How they vibe off of each other. How they even uh, rag on each other. It was very genuine. Um, the acting with the uh, the minor characters was pretty decent as well. Um, only though the protagonist is, I don't want to give the movie away, but protagonist the, the, that would be Dwayne Wayne. The, is that who you're talking about? No. Uh, the abusive boyfriend that the scene that you, the clip that oh. you saw before. He would be like the he, antagonist. A- antagonist. He was, um, I just didn't like his role. It was unbelievable and ridiculous. 
It just it was kind of like over the top. You know what I, I mean? They I just, get what they were trying to portray, but or contray, contray, convey, but it was totally over the top how it was inserted into the into the script. It's but almost, everything else yeah. was pretty cool. It's almost like an afterthought. Let's put this in here so she can have some type of drama behind this because it was like it didn't make no sense. It didn't even make sense why he was mad. I mean, even though abuse relationship don't make sense anyway, but this guy. It just didn't make sense to me. Yeah. So the um, even though the last clip is not really necessary, but it was just to give you an idea, like they were all they all showed up to this black party like this, the dark party. They had to be blindfolded, and um, pretty much, pretty much in engage with the people at the party just via like conversation and just like slight touching like they would dance with each other but they couldn't see each other's faces so yeah they could i wanted to like show that part but they, um they couldn't take their blindfolds off until they was ready to leave so it they they did have like ushers or something like that to guide them through different areas of the party <laughs> but you only knew that person by scent yeah and they voice and maybe how they feel you like i guess you feeling on a wrist like ray charles to figure out who you talk to exactly but besides that i thought it was a pretty cool party in a sense but um you know i wouldn't want to go to one i'm straight <laughs> but yeah yeah because you gotta overall. trust people you gotta trust people and trust that nobody's gonna slip anything in your drink like i ain't got time I and mean, you gotta trust that nobody's peeking and slip. like and i don't that doesn't mean i have trust issues either it's just that i wouldn't want to do it but the concept was cool. Overall, I thought the acting and the characters were funny and believable. And like he said, I love Mike and Jeff's um, relationship. You have to hear the dialogue between them two. They really seem like they are legit friends, like in real life. They really played off each other. Um, and the music was dope, even though Rico didn't like the song in the beginning. The mu there's good music throughout the film. So I gave it three popcorns. I also gave it three popcorns um, because, again, some of the things I pointed out, and most of all, I felt like it was a entertaining movie. Most of all, uh, is it was just had those couple of moments that yes, he was puzzled for a moment, but also they had a lot of funny moments too that overshadowed that. There's like, uh, you know, we know this was a jacked up scene, but. Here's a better scene. You'd be like, oh, yeah, okay, I'll take that. So that's why I gave it a three out of five popcorns. Uh, it could have been a four. Could have been a five if those couple of things was, like, cleared up in a sense. If the crazy ex-boyfriend, uh, they had done yeah. something else with that um, with that storyline, it would have been. So It would have been cool. But you can um, email us movie suggestions at innerlensmedia at gmail.com. And also follow us on Instagram at Real and Chill, on Facebook at Real and Chill Podcast, and also listen to our podcast on Anchor, Spotify, Google, Apple, and other places where podcasts are played. Um, what else? And yes, if you have a chance, watch the movie, email us, you know, tell us what you think about the movie. Or you can like DM us um, on Instagram or Facebook yeah. and let us know what you thought about the movie as well. We just like to interact with folks, get some suggestions, yeah, have some conversation. And if you know a movie that you want us to watch, um, even if you're a filmmaker yourself and you want us to watch it, you know, let us know. Okay, that's all we got. Yeah. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Say bye. Bye. I don't understand why I was going to tell you to say bye.